What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle back here with part 5 of our React Native Redux tutorial where we do this Capo Keys application from scratch to finish. And right now we're not very far into it. But what I wanted to do in this video was show you the image components. So we want to put our little Capo Keys logo over there. And also I want to explain some uh, image caching technique that Expo allows us to do. I'm not too familiar with it, but I just followed the docs and it seems to work fine, so... I'm just following best practices here. So here we are back at our main screen.js and the first thing I want to do is tell you that I have updated the assets file here. So previously the icons were these ugly little square things and now I've created these different little images. Well the app icon and loading icon are the same, they just need to be labeled that so that we can get them from this stuff over here. So we have our icon for app icon and a loading one. We could just use the same path there but I'm just storing two of them at once because one day maybe I want to change the loading icon to be different to the app icon so I keep it separate. Another thing I've implemented is this pure icon which is just a transparent white icon that I plan to place on our application. So if we look back into our app over here, here we have this open area. I want this white transparent icon to sit over there where that eye is sitting. So that is the plan. You can get these on the GitHub repo under section 5. If you just go over to, if you remember from the second video, I'll leave a card up over here that goes to the second video. I showed you how to get to the GitHub repo. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So that should help you out there. Then you can find the icons there in assets and just make sure that you replace this icons folder with the new icons that we have. So it's not that boring square that we had in Expo. Here's an example. We used to have this square over here. So next time we restart the project, this is actually going to change to that Capo Keys logo that we want. Anyway, back to Visual Studio Code. So what we're going to do is we need to actually go and implement this image right in over here at this header left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what any person would do is add an image component. And this image component, actually, I need to import from React Native. We're not using text anymore. So we just want to get image from React Native. This is a component straight from the default React Native thing, so we don't have to stress too much about it. And this image takes two things, basically. I actually want to put this in its own little line. So let's do that. Put brackets there and close brackets over here. And there's going to be two things in this image, so I'll put it over multiple lines. This image is going to have a source which is going to equal the icon path and I will get that path just now in a second and it's also going to have a style which I'm going to implement as uh, styles.image style and the way we implement our styles is we go down here and I've already worked out this but what you want to do is add const styles equals image style and if you've checked out my previous tutorial on the YouTube stuff, there's a link to it up here. You will be able to see, well, you'll remember this from there because I use styles quite a lot there. And I keep forgetting to call these styles, even in this tutorial series. So what I want to put in here is, I've worked out that it needs a margin top of 20, as well as a margin left of 10. And finally, a width of 40. And then a height of 40. And I forgot something there. Yeah. Uh, this is supposed to be a comma, not a full stop. Now, I just realized as I was typing this that this probably needs to be changed according to Android or iOS. But I'm not entirely sure, so I'm just going to keep it as 20 now. I know this works on Android. If you're on iOS and you're having troubles, just make sure to implement what we've done over here. Maybe on iOS it needs to be 0 and status bar height is actually 20. I don't know, but just... Trigger this until it works once you see the working example. Before we test this, we need to also include our icon. So in order to do that, we're going to import icon. And we'll import it here above the constants. Let us import icon from, and we go one folder up. So because we're currently in screen, so we go up to the root folder and then we go slash assets, slash icons, slash pure icon png now that refers to this pure icon over here which we were talking about 
It's just a transparent background and a white foreground. And we're going to save that. Now we head over to Expo. And we need to make sure to restart our application because we've changed the assets. And that's very important because this needs to reset everything and clear the cache and do its thing. So I will be right back when this is done and I've got my application running. Right, so here we are in our Expo XDE and as you can see our app is already loading up. It's still only like bundling its JavaScript stuff here, but I just wanted to point out that this logo is already here and showing. So we know that we're on the right track and everything is kind of working. I'm going to fast forward until this app is fully finished loading and we will start from there. Alrighty, so here we go. We have our application running and just as expected, I've gone through the liberty of opening Visual Studio Code again, uh, just so I can show you what's going on here. I do want to mention if you are on iPhone and this image is not looking right, just be sure to change this margin top to match according to that. So if it's too high, then make the margin top more. If it's too low, make the margin top less so that there's less of a margin between this and the top. In my case, I think I've just tried to sort it out for the status bar. So on iPhone, the margin top could be zero. I mean, yeah, that all depends on what's going on. Anyway, um, the next section of this video we, we basically we've got this working all as expected so we could leave it here and not do anything but I want to show you guys a best practice now this is something I've actually just checked out in the docs and well it's a best practice so I'm going to implement it because I know a lot of people like to know what's the best practice for caching images personally I don't think it's a very big deal especially in this application it's really not a big deal because this is the only image we have but I'm going to show you how to cache images as well anyway and a very similar thing goes for fonts. You want to do that as well if you have fonts. But I'm going to leave a link in the description below showing you the documentation to this. Because I'm not going to be able to explain this too well. I'm just going to go through and implement it for you. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to make a function. And we'll call it cache images. And that's going to take a bunch of images. And then we are going to do something in that function. Don't worry, I'm going to change this to an ES6-like function later because I actually like that more. This returns images uh, dot map, so you map through each image. And for each image, we want to do something else. And then in here, we want to say if the type of the image is a string, which I'm assuming it means it's a path, then you want to return image dot prefetch image. So that image is referring to the component image and this image is referring to that image. I hope you kind of understand that. And then the classic else over here. Let me just add a semicolon there. It's bugging me already. What I want to do from here on, I want to say return. Oh, this is another thing I forgot to do. I need to import expo. So I've got to import expo from expo. Expo is included with our project, so we don't have to install anything there. And we're going to say expo.asset.frommodule image download. It's been a while since I've done this, so I am struggling to explain how this works, but just bear with me. So here we have this function, and what I actually want to do is change it into a, well, something that's nicer to read, because it's quite old school style. Let's move to 2017. And here we have that arrow body function, so I'm going to make this smaller. Let me fix that. And this also needs to have a semicolon, and we'll move everything in. And this is basically the same as what we just had, except it's nice and compact. Could even do this here, so just we know this is a cached image thing. Can even hide it. But yeah, that'll do. Anyway, what I want to do next is head down to underneath the static navigation option. We need to deal with a state. So we're just assigning a state to this main screen over here. And we're going to have a app is ready state. And by default, it's going to be false. So by default, this is not running. And what we need to do now is also make an asynchronous function. So it's going to run on its own. Not Nothing's going to wait for it. And we say load assets async. This is just, this is straight from the docs. So this is not like me doing it. I'm just following documentation. Sometimes that's what you got to do. 
and we have to include our cached images and we're caching the icon so that's literally our array of images and you you would say multiple images in here but we only have an icon so we're going to have our images which is an array of images and it's just going to have icon in it we want that to be cached and uh well that's our image assets so all sorted there then we're going to set an asynchronous function so we're going to say await promise.all this await is just a newer javascript thing where you can say what it essentially means is we're doing like a function promise all and then there's going to be a dot then but because we have a wait, we can just set the next function to be what's going to go on. So, well, I have, ignore me, I just pressed full stop a bunch of times. I'm going to hide this for now because I'm not there yet. So we go through here, await promise.all, and we put our image assets in there. And after that, so basically the way an await function works is you basically put a dot then there and then you run the stuff that's going to be in the dot then right after the await. It's just a clean await to write code so you don't have this crazy nested stuff going on. So once this is all sorted, we want to set app is ready, true. Now again, as I keep mentioning, I've stolen this straight from the documentation. So I don't really know how to explain it. This is just the right way of caching images. The final thing we need to do here is set a component will mount and then you just simply say you want to run this load assets async excellent so this should all run perfectly fine what is wrong here oh it's expecting this so this dangling thing here is just a naming convention that they've made so what we can actually do to eliminate this dangling issue is read here we say no slash no dash underscore dash dangle so what we want to do is head into ESLint and over here we need to add a special thing where we don't want to have the ESLint rules running um, we want to say if we can remember that that said no underscore dangles yes and we want the rules to not be followed so we write zero which represents false so that just means ignore that rule because otherwise we're gonna have this whole issue going on here so now that should go away if ESLint has figured what's going on no underscore dangle did I type it in right oh uh, it's supposed to be dangle singular not plural so if we go back here there we go uh, the Technically, the warning's still there, but it doesn't show anymore. So that's great. It's just a nice way to hide your ESLint rules that you don't want to follow. So there's another little tip for you. Now, the next thing we want to do is head over to Expo. And I don't think we need to restart, but I'm going to restart anyway. And then I'm going to head into my application. So I will be right back. I will come back when this is all done. Right, so here our application is loading up. Uh, hopefully this works. Basically what I'm testing now is just to make sure that everything still works when I implement this image caching thing. There's no way to really, well, there are ways to test it, but I'm not going to worry too much about testing if it works. If my code is running fine, then I'm pretty sure it's working fine. So that's going to be my philosophy for this part of the tutorial. I mean, I'm not going to always be like that. But yeah, anyway, if you think I'm an idiot, let me know in the comments below. I like to hear feedback. If you don't think I'm an idiot, let me know in the comments below because you know what? Why not? Um, I will be back when this is done. Right, guys, and there we have it. Uh, everything's running and there doesn't seem to be any problem. So that's going to cut it for this video. As usual, guys, please be sure to click the subscribe button over here and leave a like in the video if you've enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, I'm really sorry. Let me know in the comments below how I can make it better. I will catch you guys in the next video.